Okay, well, that wasn't the most exciting tutorial boss in all of existence. Um, as one goes, is definitely closer to the baby's first side of things than the golden standard of accessible yet challenging. The gameplay was pretty simple as you saw. What you need to do is transform into Space Wario and then use your laser to constantly shoot at the tiny weak spot on top of Count Cannoli's vehicle of choice, which you've been seeing throughout the first level of the game, so it's pretty obvious what you need to do, especially since the game reinforces this by putting what costume you need to be in to do damage to Cannoli in the bottom left of the screen. You know, it's helpful in the later bosses when, you know, a hint on what to really do in something that requires four or three costume changes to actually get through the process of dealing some damage is actually pretty helpful. In the easy tutorial boss fight of the first level, not so much because you can get the whole thing done inside of a couple minutes once Count Cannoli stops goofing off and pretending that he's in a badass machine when in reality he can barely muster up any sort of skill to defeat Wario or even do basic damage to him. I think the first boss of the original Sonic the Hedgehog was actually more challenging and had a better chance of hitting you than Count Cannoli's first attempt. But the real highlight of this boss fight is the continuation of the developer's 
insistence on making this game, in comparison to other Wario games, very plot-heavy, and bringing out some personality for both Wario and Count Cannoli, which works pretty well because they're entertaining enough as stereotypical, but somewhat uniquely realized characters, and they do try to play up to their stereotypes. And while we've seen these types of characters before, they add in some nuances and they add in some new things throughout the dialogue. And there is a lot of dialogue in this game that makes them interesting to see on screen. Plus, they have pretty great character designs for this, um, I'm gonna say 8-bit inspired 2D platformer because it has the graphics technologies of the DS, but from how it's designed, it definitely looks like it could have easily been put onto the NES with an appropriate downgrade. Again, it's not the most flashy introduction to boss fights that this game has got going for it, but the plot that they've introduced throughout the game, while it's incredibly goofy, it does have some very solid characters and it seems to be building some sort of intrigue to pull the players towards the conclusion of the game. It's just going to be tough to see what they do with it in the long run. But as it stands right now, we're just getting introduced to the characters and I can definitely give the developer a wait and see attitude on what sort of quality is going to come into play on this. With the introduction, it was good enough as one, we just need to see you know, if it's going to be justified by what it made us sit through, since it's trying to boil up the action and pay off some conclusions and climaxes later down the line. So yeah, we'll wait and see. Maybe Count Cannoli will become a giant dragon. I mean, we don't really know what's going on at this point. 